It is now time to introduce our commencement speaker. As a trumpet player myself, it is my tremendous honor to introduce to you one of the greatest trumpet players of all time, Wynton Marsalis. Mr. Marsalis is a world-renowned musician, band leader, composer, music historian, and all-around champion of American culture. He is a longtime friend of the University of Michigan. His jazz and symphonic compositions and performances have brought joy to this community and to music lovers all around the world. Please join me in giving our warmest Wolverine welcome to Wynton Marsalis. Thank you very much, Ida, for the beautiful and kind introduction. Thank you, Board of Regents and President Ono, for the pleasure and honor of addressing this year's graduates. Class of 23, you have finally made it to the finish line. Congratulations again. As you congregate here to the rightful chorus of kudos from family, friends, mentors, professors, and others, please take in the size, the grandeur, and the pomp of this, your graduation from the mighty University of Michigan. As you scour the stadium for the approving eyes of beloved and valued persons, I hope you also feel the presence of an extended support system that opened for membership long ago with the very first graduating class of 1845, which culminates in your induction this morning. From henceforth, this moment delineates the timeline of your life. When I was in college, before college, and after college. And although all eyes are upon you, you are not a destination. You are a connector, forever spanning what was and what will be, and actualizing the dreams and aspirations of parents, ancestors, and alumni. You are also an inspiration to younger relatives, future graduates, and to those not yet on the path of higher education who wish to follow. You're actually a bridge a powerful translator between the generations of your family, of this institution, and of our way of life. Now, as a musician traveling up and down this bountiful country for over 40 years, having done close to 200 gigs in the last two years alone, I've had the opportunity to speak with all sorts of people from every walk and stage of life. This is what our post-COVID conversations have taught me. We desperately need your participation to silence the loud and messy divisiveness that has come to define our national life. I would love to stand here before you all. It's your graduation. I'd like to keep things breezy and light, blow a tune or two, tell a few jokes. But this precarious moment demands your attention. In this time, the tearing apart of families, the battling of genders, and unrestrained vilification of the other has become a public sport. Our landscape is littered with profiteers who demonize your actual support system here surrounding you to flatter you into a consumer relationship by ascribing special value to your youth. <laughs> Think about it. Youth, in and of itself, is not a value. It's not a quality like intelligence or humanity or soul. Don't be fooled, graduates. Because you are a bridge. You are a bridge in the unrelenting cycle of life. You need a strong constitution and a willingness to invest in your position as emissary of the past to the future and as translator of the future to the past. The deeper the divide, the more crucial the need. From the moment a bridge is constructed, everything from daily traffic to the corrosive forces of the elements to the pitiless passage of time itself conspires to degrade its integrity. A bridge needs to be flexible yet firm, and its structural 
and functional health requires consistent care. May you all take down your toll gates, keep the lanes of communication open, and invest in your relationship with elders and youngsters with the same intensity and interest that you show for people your own age. You're going to be responsible for bridging unforeseen transitions from one crisis to the next, from one time to the next, and from one way of being to the next. Your ecosystem requires your presence. Be present, y'all. Look around carefully on this day. Look around. Drink in the memories of each street and building, pub, club, classroom, store, and house. Every pathway holds the stories of hundreds of, hundreds of thousands, no, actually millions of students who have passed this way. You too will return as alumni, as parents, artists, donors, and professors to experience what the many of us who embrace you in this very moment feel. We're in the audience and you are center stage. <laughs> but let me tell you something, no audience, no stage. In this time of technology as demigod, second only to money, on the cusp of ubiquitous AI technology that promises everything from writing epical masterpieces to going to the bathroom for you. Some confusing information with knowledge are already prepared to rethink the value of education itself. <laughs> if the computer works and thinks for you, why, you can really live a life of absolute leisure, goes the reasoning. Don't be fooled, graduates. Because you have the recipe, it don't mean you can cook the meal. At some point, a person has to show you how to breathe life into those instructions. And eventually, you may transcend the recipe with the power of your own creative imagination and your own unique brand of feeling, but that's not necessarily a given. May you never lose your sense of taste to the degree that you would choose prepackaged, nutritionless, over-preserved food products to a down-home meal prepared with skill, love, and interest in your well-being. I want y'all to look around. I want you to feel the convening strength of a class of this size. Look at all of these people. Let's consider all the personal and collective resources that have been invested and expended to get you to this very moment. Think of all the dreams that you ride on. The collective dream is the most powerful force on the planet Earth. Today's commencement down to the placement of chairs on this dais is the result of a collective dream called the University of Michigan. Go Blue. And from that collective vision, from that collective vision, each and every one of you dreamt at some point to this day and of this day. Now here we are, from engineering to public policy, law to business to nursing, all the disciplines represented here form component parts of a whole that has prepared you to undergird the building blocks of our way of life. If those foundations are nurtured and in balance, we are healthy and thriving. If not, we struggle. That's why we need y'all at the table. It's plain and it's evident. You are the avant guard of our optimism. Your collective success will mean that this education has been brought to bear to solve the pressing and overwhelming problems of our time. I want y'all to forget the forced hipness of apathy. We need your enthusiasm, your willingness, and your solutions, your belief. Well, I've played Hill Auditorium over 20-something times, presented by UMS over these past 37 years, teaching and playing with students and interacting with professors, coaches, alumni, kids, and parents alike. They've always demonstrated great warmth and depth of feeling, the great depth of feeling that comes with the best of community. It's one of the defining relationships of my professional career and a, and a partnership that has given me great pleasure and pride. UMS is actually the finest college presenting organization in this nation because students, professors, and alumni alike actually attend the fantastic art that is presented 
from around the world. <laughs> they feel healed with a bristling intergenerational energy that is all too rare. It is the spirit of this feeling. It is in this spirit. I remain hopeful and, vig and vigilant. Now in this time, I know y'all know it, our country is actually crying out for a new collective dream. It's screaming. It's begging you. We need a new belief in a massive, unapologetic assertion of integrity. There is just simply too much trash in this system. It's too much. A pornographic cultural mainstream that sells sexualized and violent products to kids under the guise of music and film. A contemptuous corrupt leadership in all political parties and from all walks of life posing as public servants, boasting and preening while wasting billions of overprinted dollars that have been siphoned off the hide of America with increasing velocity and shameless arrogance. Incendiary and lightweight punditry from fraudulent news outlets on both sides, delivering cynical entertainment under the banner of serious journalism. Paper-thin celebrities and narcissistic influencers peddling pixie dust as holy water is now and finally, it's just too much to bear. The headlong descent into shameless decadence and unchecked commercialism has created an anxiety and, and an isolation that is increasingly destroying the mental health of our young. It's causing us to murder each other over minor disputes, to gun down young children in schools, to desire empty transactional lives and ultimately to interface more eagerly and meaningfully with gadgets and devices than with people. We are numbed into accepting the unacceptable without blinking an eye. Don't be fooled, graduates, because the dimensions of understanding are not binary. There is no simple right and wrong. We need a revolution. We need a revolution in thought and feeling. We need a revolution in thought and feeling through collective participation. An entire nation cannot hold itself hostage and become an armed perimeter in fear of itself. Our planet is multidimensional. And believe me, people all over the world want to know you and to embrace you. They are not your enemy. We need indefatigable volunteers in the cause of the people, not just our people. Hey, this democracy cost a lot of people a lot. It would be a tragedy of historic proportion to squander that inheritance because our young couldn't envision an America better than the mess we've made of it for you. Because our young didn't have the will and desire to throw off the shackles of deeply rooted corruption and come together in the cause of mutual freedoms because they're too busy playing make-believe games or they're lost in a make-believe world or too distracted by wondering who likes them on an app. May you never become numb to the deprivation and poverty, the misery and lack of opportunity that besets so many of your less fortunate and less aware fellow citizens. May you never lose the sense that a collective will can create unimagined change to better the lives of more and more citizens. You all are needed out here. Hello? We desperately need you and your creativity, your conscience, and your consciousness. The genius alto saxophonist Charlie Parker wrote a defining blues of the bebop style entitled, Now's the Time. If you believe in the ascendancy of humanity, please loudly declare your intentions and spend your entire lives making those dreams, whatever they may be, a reality. Class of 23, 
I know you can help put us on the good foot. We need your very best, and we need it right now. Thank you so much.